Welcome, welcome, rockers and music lovers. Do musicians deserve to get paid? And the short answer is no. Uh, this episode is going to be the first installment of what I like to call straight talk. We are going to talk about all kinds of things involved in the music business and what musicians like us might encounter as we're trying to earn our living. Now, before, before you pull out the pitchforks and the torches and start storming the castle, let me explain. If you have gone to the trouble of booking a show, agreed upon a date, a time, and a price, and you have executed your part of the deal, well then, of course, you deserve to get paid. Everybody deserves to get paid for the work they do. But why are so many musicians having trouble getting paid? Doesn't it seem like that there are always a few people in the local scene that seem to be getting all of the gigs? And why is that? And why are so many musicians struggling all the time? Talented musicians who have taken the time to learn their instruments, to, to learn music, and who are really good at what they do, why do they not get the gigs? To me, the answer is pretty simple. Might surprise you, or it might not. The reality is, is that playing music and running a business, i.e. getting gigs, are two separate and independent things. This is why I say no when asked the question, do musicians deserve to get paid? Does a plumber deserve to get paid? Now this person goes to plumber school, <laughs> learns how to plumb, do they deserve to get paid? Well, they have to go out and find a job or they have to create a clientele base for which they can work. Now if you go to university and you earn an MBA, well, you might have a master's in business administration but do you have a company to administer? Do you have a job? If you don't get a job, do you deserve to get paid? I'm not gonna go into the philosophical question of does society owe us a living, but I'm going to talk about the reality of what it's like to make a living in music. And even if you're not planning on making a living doing 100% music, what I'm about to share with you will definitely help you because I am somebody who has been working for many, many years Years in the industry and I have been able to work as much as I want to. I get the gigs that I want to and if I really want it, it's going to happen for me. It's just a matter of time. But why is that? Is it because I'm the most talented guy on the scene? Hell no. But I do have a sense of business. That is one thing that I can share with you right here. So what do you need to do? What are the ways that you can get gigs and what kind of gigs are out there? Let me preface this by saying that there are a few different types of musicians. There are the musicians who just write their own music and have no interest in playing cover tunes whatsoever. Well, if you are one of these musicians, respect to you, it's a valid path. I understand that you want your voice to be pure and you want to give all of your energy to creating your own music and it is applaudable and laudable. But we're gonna have trouble getting steady gigs if we are just playing original music, providing that you are relatively unknown, and especially if you are in a small town, if you are not in a music center. I live in Montreal, Canada, and Montreal has a pretty strong music scene. We are about 3.5 million people in the greater Montreal area, maybe 4 million now. We have a pretty good music scene. There's a downtown music scene, there's a music scene in the suburbs, and there's plenty of places to play. There seems to be all kinds of new gigs popping up all over the place if you're looking for them. But if you're only playing original music, you're really left to only one or two choices, and that is playing private parties, or it is the pay-to-play scenario in the bars that do this sort of thing. So there are a lot of venues around town where if they don't have a band, they're not really open for business. There are places that are pure venues, and what, the, what often happens there is that there will be a few bands that get together that are relatively unknown, hoping that they will assemble a, a larger crowd by each bringing in their own crowd. And this pay to play thing is where you would rent a place and you would sell tickets and you would take a risk. And the chances are that if you do this more than a couple of times a year, you're gonna come up barely being able to pay the rent, the sound person, the security at the door, the wait staff. Uh, this is what the rent encompasses when you rent out a place like this. And then you're left with whatever money is left over 
after that, which is oftentimes not a lot. And a lot of bands that are on tour playing original music, basically a bunch of people living in a van and just traveling from place to place are, are really, really having a tough time these days. Especially when you consider that the sale of physical music in CD or vinyl has basically dropped off a cliff. Everybody seems to be streaming these days or going to streaming platforms to consume their music. When you're out on your own and you're in your own band and you're playing your own music, well, we basically have become glorified t-shirt commercials. My drummer, uh, T-Burst, and I, we, we joke about this all the time. We call ourselves a t-shirt commercial because the album sales, even at, at major festivals, which I play every summer, have dropped off a cliff. I sell 10 t-shirts for every one CD that I sell. Many people don't even own a CD player. They don't come in cars standard anymore. They don't come in computers standard anymore. And very few people I know actually have a standalone CD player that is integrated into a sound system. We are generally Bluetoothing or, or playing through our computers whatever is streaming on whatever platforms that we're on. That's okay. I'm not bemoaning that, but this is a reality where we used to be able to sell tons of records. Now we're lucky if we sell a few t-shirts. If you are a band that plays covers, then you have a lot more opportunities open. You can't go selling tickets for your show. Uh, well, you could, I guess, but um, I don't know too many people who would pay tickets when they can just go to any local bar and hear somebody playing Wonderwall or Sweet Home Alabama without having to pay entry fee. There are a lot of bars that feature cover tunes. Uh, most of them, I would say 95% of the places encourage you to play other people's music, well-known music. You can play in bars, you can play in restaurants. There are cruise ships. If you're in a tribute band, you want to do just the music of Tool or Metallica or Elton John or anybody, and you put together a convincing show, well, then you can get into the theaters and you can get into bigger clubs and things like that. Most people, the bread and butter are the bars. How do you even go about getting your first gig? Let's assume that you don't want to make your living playing music. Let's just assume that you want to subsidize your salary with some gigs on the weekend. Let's say you just want to be a weekend warrior, and that is totally cool too. You can be a passionate hobbyist, make a few bucks, afford yourself to upgrade your guitars and buy some nice amps and stuff. Where do you even start? The one thing I can say is that the easiest way to get low-hanging gigs, low-hanging fruit, is to look at other bands and artists in your neck of the woods that are playing the places that you would want to play. Either they have a website, or they have a Facebook page, or they have an Instagram page, or something like that, and where they'll be posting their shows. So you look at where they're playing, and then if you're friendly with these people, you can ask them if maybe they can give you an inside track with the owner or the booker there. If not, you can approach these places on your own. Own. This is what I did when I started getting serious about playing music. When I first started playing, there, there was no social media. So I did it the old fashioned way and it was a lot of word of mouth and it was a lot of uh, showing up at, at venues and asking to speak to the manager and hoping that you have the confidence to sell yourself. And the best way to be confident to sell yourself is to be confident in your skills and know that you can deliver on what you are promising. Hey music lovers, if you are enjoying this content, hit the subscribe button below this video. It's the best way for us to keep in contact and for you to know when I put out new content, which is every week. So you approach these bars, whatever contact information you can find, and you start leaving messages, or you show up like in the old fashioned way and you try to meet this person face to face because if you can meet the booker or the manager, the person that takes care of this stuff, it's a lot easier because face to face is a lot harder to ignore somebody than just to say that I'm not gonna return that call. I've had so many horror stories of well-meaning civilians. And what I mean by civilians is like regular people with regular jobs who uh, try to help a young artist in their neighborhood to get more gigs. There are some good Samaritans out there that do this sort of thing. They are almost categorically horrified when they see how difficult it is to even get a call back from a manager of a given gig, let alone to secure an actual engagement. It's a very daunting task. I was doing pretty well in the suburbs around Montreal, and I was, uh, especially in the West End, and I was getting fairly well known there, and I could put people in the bars. But
But there was this one place downtown that I really, really, really wanted to play. It was uh, the premier blues and rock bar downtown Montreal. And I contacted this person, the, the owner there, over and over again. Once a week, I would either send an email or leave a voicemail. I was basically ignored. I was ignored for months. Finally, I wrote an email to this person knowing that they were getting through. And I just said, look, what does it take to play at this place? I've been contacting you for months. I know you're ignoring me. I know you're getting my messages, but I'll tell you what, after five months of courting this place, I said, look, allow me and my band to play one night. And if at the end of that night that you don't think that we're one of the best bands that you've ever had in that place, you don't have to pay me. Now, wow, it's a really bold statement, but I was confident that I could have competed with the best at that time. Of course, with an offer like that, I got my gig. The owner was there watching my first set, and at the end of the first set, we killed it. We put all of our all of our real killer songs up there, and as we finished the last chord, bam, of that first set, I heard him say to his buddy there, now that's the kind of mix that we need at this bar. There you go. After all that, he didn't even know that I was his new best friend. I had to go through the process of being ignored and saying that there's no way I'm going to let myself get down on this. Fast forward a couple of weeks and I'm playing this place on a more regular basis and I'm in there on a Thursday night when it is absolutely dead, but the band is killing it because we're so excited that we're playing at this new cool place. Well, who walks in but the founder of the Montreal International Jazz Festival? Had I not gone through all of that, promised to play for free if he didn't like me, here I am face to face with the founder of the International Jazz Festival of Montreal. I played there that summer because of that meeting. So had I not gone through all of this process, I would have missed the opportunity to play in front of almost 10,000 people in my hometown at one of the biggest music festivals in the world. And I can't even count all the other opportunities that have come to me from playing these places. Let's say that you don't have the kind of confidence to sell yourself. Well, then maybe you have a friend who that you can coach, who can represent you, who can call on your behalf. It's a Suffice it to say is that there is no magic formula to getting the gigs except for perseverance, cold calling. Another time was I was doing exactly what I said. I was on social media, basically stalking another band who was doing what I wanted to be doing. And I was going to the places that they were playing. This is very important. You're going to have to be able to represent yourself on video. So somehow you're going to have to capture a decent video of your band playing, decent sounding and decent looking, and put together some kind of a press kit you need. You're going to need a poster. You're going to need all of these things will make you look more professional. So I took my my semi-professional uh, homemade press kit and, and I went an hour down the highway to the next town that I wanted to play in. And I just cold called this place. And uh, luckily in these smaller towns, uh, you're more often to get a manager or an owner that is at the place. And I got a gig in this new place, in a new venue that I'd never played for. Within the next four years, I was playing the agricultural fair there a couple of times, very well paid. I got weddings, I got the fireman's ball, and I got just endless uh, weekends at this club that I wanted to play in. It led to so many more opportunities because I took that first step, because I was thinking like a business person and not just like a musician. Again, we go back to the question is, do musicians deserve to get paid? Well, of course, everybody deserves to get paid for the work that they put in. But how do you put in that work? Is that you get on the phone, you get on the email, and you find friends. We all have friends who are musicians who are doing it. Ask to be invited up. I did this for a friend of mine in Montreal. I invited him down to one of my regular gigs. I got him up on stage with the band. I made sure that the manager was there to see him. And then I went to the manager afterwards and I introduced this guy to the manager. Now, if you have a friend like that, that can do the same for you, well, that's a leg up. There are so many ways to do this, but you have to put in the work and you have to be cognizant that playing music and booking gigs are two completely independent skills that need to be learned if you want to have 
any kind of success. You don't have to be making a living purely out of music because let's face it, we're in a gig economy. This is the definition of a gig economy, which means that you're going from one contract to another. And in music, it's basically short term, single nights or some places book two nights in a row. And then after that, you're back to the pavement trying to find your next gig. Not everybody has the stomach for it. Some people really, really need to have security. If you are one of the people that needs security, well, there's a lot of people I know who are excellent musicians who have a job and who play on the weekend. Is it a little bit rough flipping your schedules around because this, the gigs are later? Yeah, sure, but what are the options? You could just not play at all, or you could make some money with your passion. That's one option, and just the percentage of how much you work in the music business and how much your, your day job subsidizes your, your music business activity is completely a personal choice. It's up to you. I personally cannot stand working a regular job uh, in my adult life. When I started an original band that was only playing original I really wanted to focus on this. I knew I wouldn't be able to make money in the clubs on the weekend because I would be playing pay to play places and, and battle of the bands to try to get noticed. I took a day job and I was completely miserable. Even though I was doing my weekend gigs and I, I gained 40 pounds and I was I was placating myself with food and with, with alcohol because I was so unhappy with what I did. So the old adage where if you have a choice to do something else other than playing music, well then go ahead and do that. But if your only choice is to play music in life, if you do not feel right if you're playing music, well then you're in the right business. Because that is what music is for me. I could not imagine life without playing music. So I just threw myself into it headlong. Were there tough times at the beginning? Oh yeah, there were tough times. But I worked as a painter, as a contractor, drywalling, doing whatever I could to make some money in between gigs. Because the other thing is, is that if, if you're working a day job and you want to play gigs, and especially if you want to you know, go out of town on the weekend or something, you're going to need a, a boss who is really, really sympathetic to your cause. So it's, it's more difficult than it sounds, especially at the beginning. But once you get to a point where you have enough contacts, what happens is that you start to roll over a circuit that you're playing every three months or so. You'll find that you, you'll just be going back through this, this series of shows in, in places that you're used to playing. And then the question is, are you going to get comfortable in doing that and not progress or move up? I am very fortunate that, that my phone rings constantly. My biggest issue is to keep time off so that I can make these videos so that we can have time together because I play so much, but I've been at this for a long time and I have several albums out and, and I have a huge network. How did I build that network? I built the network and this is probably, if there's anything that you take away from this video, one is that music and business are two different skills that need to be developed independently of each other. And secondly, what I'm about to tell you is probably the biggest thing that differentiates me from other people on the circuit and I play as much as I want to play. And that is, you show up on time, you be nice to the people that you work with. Remember the bartender's name. When I was growing up, people that worked in the clubs with other people that worked in clubs, we never tipped each other. The waitress, the waiter, the bartender, you get your drinks and that was it. We are co-workers we don't tip each other but that vibe has changed today so tip even if it's a nominal amount tip the waitress who brings you your drinks it's not her fault that you have four or five free drinks in the night little things like that learn the person's name and just remember that you are not the most important person in the room just because you brought your instrument and you're going to sing for these people later on what you have to realize is that you are in their backyard. You are in their work environment. So you should come in there with humility and respect and don't be a devo and, and be crazy and demanding and, and nasty with people. And I guarantee you that when the manager or the owner asks the bartender, how was that band? They might not even have had time to really register what you were doing that night on stage, but they will remember the fact that you were nice to them that you remembered their name and that you tipped them and they're gonna give you a glowing review unless you didn't hold up your end of the bargain. So you have to be able to go in, deliver what you promise that you're going to deliver, be nice to the people, and then after your gig, follow up 
with the booker and ask them, are they happy? Show a little bit of humility. Show that you want to work with them. Because if you go in snapping your suspenders and shooting out the lights and thinking that you are God's gift to music just because you can play a few songs, you won't get very far. I know a ton of musicians who are incredibly talented, who have a heck of a time keeping gigs. And the last thing that I will say is that once you are in this milieu, you have to keep your health. You have to keep your head on your shoulders. Substances are a real problem. Substance abuse is a real problem in this environment. Most places give you free drinks. Most places, there's a couple of guys that are carrying some drugs and they, they, they want nothing more than to share with you, either to get you hooked on something or just because they truly appreciate your music. But the point is, is that if you play in a club four nights a week and you have five drinks a night, well, you, at the end of the week, that's 20 drinks you've had and you haven't had a day off. Now, you're going to drink again on your day off and then before you know it, you're gaining weight, you're not eating healthy, your voice is going to suffer, your playing is going to suffer because if you are not in good shape, you are not going to be able to play well. Let's face it, our bodies are our instruments, whether you're a guitar player or a singer or a drummer, you are only as good as your vehicle. So we need to treat our vehicle right. So I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, I've been very successful in booking myself. I now have three agents working for me uh, in different capacities. I started off with absolutely zero, but I promise you with the things that I have shared with you in this video, basically be ready to promote yourself with some decent video, decent recordings and, and a press kit of some sort, even if your press kit is just a short bio and a poster. Get out and do some cold calling. Role model other bands in your neighborhood that are doing well and try to play at the places that they are playing. And if you have a friend, ask that friend to invite you up just to show what you can do. I promise you that if you follow these things and you are tenacious and you do not let yourself get down Learn to take no as an exciting response that is going to get you closer to that first yes. As I promise you, you're going to get ignored and you are going to get a ton of no's, flat out no's. No matter how good you are, do not let that discourage you. Stick with these points that I've given you and I promise you, you will start to work. And the more you work, the more the work will come. You just need to build up your network. Thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. I hope that this has been helpful to you. My name is Dwayne Dixon, a.k.a. A -double -D, and this is the first episode of Straight Talk. I hope to bring you a whole bunch more. Um, I will be bringing you a whole bunch more interesting topics in the very near future. Let's stay in touch.